Hi, it's Joe Lines from the Automator, and you're going to watch uh, at least the first half, I'd say, of, of what you're about to see. Um, I was working with Isaiah, so we were uh, doing some stuff with an emulator. Um, he has Mimu, I think it's called, and, and I use Nox and Bluestacks. And um, we were trying to get the traffic to run through Fiddler. And that way we could emulate it with AutoHotKey and try to replicate what it's doing and be able to peek inside of it. So... Um, what I'm actually, after we did two sessions, we were we, we started off, I said, hey, let's record this and I'll show you how I've done it. And then we were trying to use it in his and his didn't have some of the same settings. And when we got, we got, we kept trying to troubleshoot and fix it and uh, we couldn't figure it out. And then we took a break and then we solved it. And then we, um, sorry, meanwhile, we had stopped and then we solved it. And then we said, hey, let's, all right, let's start another recording. So. I'm actually going to jump to the second part where he does a diagram to help kind of talk through what we should have done in the first one in the beginning, which would have really helped us. Um, I'm leaving the second one in just because it's good to see like what we were working with troubleshooting. However, I, I don't expect you to watch the entire thing of that um, because, like I said, a lot of the stuff was us beating our heads against the wall because we were we were missing one little key point. But um, again, it's good troubleshooting stuff, and so I, I know you know. Uh, some people say that, like, why are you including this stuff? It doesn't work. I'm like, but it's the talking through of the process of what does and doesn't work and the logic behind it that I think is important. So, uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy it and it helps. Cheers. Uh, of course, I know that you understand these concepts, but it is good to kind of like say it in the most Absolutely. simple way, right? So, through, right? Right. So, we have our computer that actually connects to a router, right? So, we have a router that connects to the internet. So this is the basic idea. This is something that it is very simple. And this is the interesting part, the router. So you have the router here. He makes a conversion on your IP addresses. So your local address is 10.0.0.2, uh, for example, mm -hmm. and your internet address is 190 something, 180 something, something, you know. It's a blue font just so, or. Right, so this one, Again, um, this would be your internet address, 190 something, whatever. It doesn't matter what the number is. So the point is the router is the one that is kind of like doing this conversion. And this is the funny thing. When you use an emulator, that's exactly what is going on on a smaller scale. So now the emulator, has a very weird thing in there. So your emulator creates kind of like a little internet of its own in there. Just to be uh, not careful, more precise, whatever. Your The emulator you were using does this. It, I don't think- All of them do. No, oh, all of them do, right. All right so basically, okay. and actually in your, in your, so here's what happens. Now your local address is still 10.0.0.2 for your computer. Right. But in your emulator, your address is something else and it has to be something else. It will always be something different. It can be something like, as, and this was the problem. This was very confusing because the change was not that big, but in, I could see in one of your other videos, I'm gonna show you later, your address was something very crazy like this. And you can see that they're in totally different addresses. So yes. yes, it has to be like that. Now, the one who actually does the change in this case is the emulator. That's mm -hmm. what is going on. So the emulator goes ahead and translates from 10.0.0.2, whatever, to this weird looking number. Mm -hmm. He does the translation. To do that translation, the emulator has to belong to both uh, networks. So the, so the emulator, and it happens the same with the, with the router, it has two IP addresses. But you know what, you, though, you didn't, you didn't do yet before you get there, I think also, is, I think you want to add Fiddler first, don't you? No, no, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's, let's just go okay. to the basics, right? right? So, because Fiddler is just adding to the, this whole know, madness, right? right? So yeah, there's like a lot of things going yeah. on. But in this case, what I do want to kind of like, keep very, very clear right. yeah. is that now your, your um, router, which is the one in the middle, for example, 
has an IP address on the outside that looks very similar to the one on the internet, right? Yep. So this sure, external IP address. Right. So, so this address and the one in here, they look similar. So your router has that IP address for the outside so that it can right. communicate. And on the inside, it has, so this one, I'm gonna make it red so that we don't get confused. Right. 10.0.0.1. And this one actually is the address on the inside that actually communicates with that one. So the router has two IP addresses. That's what you have to understand. So this actually kind of like what the router does is that you just pass traffic between those two things. Yeah. And you said the one on the right is the gateway? No. So for us, from my computer, the 10.0.0.1 is my gateway to the outside. That's what it does. Okay, sorry. All right. right. So this is my gateway to the outside. That's what I look for. And actually, if you open up, if you just go ahead and open up your, your um, command prompt, CMD, and you do just do your IP config, right? You will see that my address is 10.0.0.2, but the default gateway is 10.0.0.1. And that one in there is just referring to my, uh, right. my router, right? Okay. And, okay. and that's how I think about the router right. as my gateway to the internet. That's what it is. Now, okay. the same is happening with your emulator. Is exact, now the emulator becomes a gateway now, okay? Now the emulator becomes a gateway. Now it does have, it does have an IP address, on your normal network, which would be something like this. And this one I actually have to kind of like modify, right? So now, oh, it just disappeared. So now you have like an internal address for your emulator, which is the one that is used to be able to connect to your local computer, right? But now here's the funny thing. Now that emulator needs another IP address for the emulated address. So in this case, it would be something like 192.168.56.1 in this case. And my- blue though, wouldn't it? Just, just to keep it, it consistent. I'm sorry? Wouldn't that one be blue? Right, so that would be blue in the sense that actually, so basically, is the one for the kind of internet. It's not like the internet, it's just to connect to the emulator computer. So whatever is in your emulator at that moment. So that's the one here. And then of course, the emulator itself has its own, uh, let me put it blue as well, has its own IP address. And I would put it like in the same network as that one. So now here's the thing. This number acts as the gateway for my emulator, you see? Because with that number, he can connect to my computer, you see? So whatever you use to pass through and talk to other computers becomes your gateway. So what was, it, what, what, what was I trying to do? I was trying to connect this guy, my emulator, to this guy, right? right? Because this guy on port 8866 has Fiddler. So I'm trying to get this guy to talk to that guy. But as you can see, the numbers are very different in this case, they're very different. And the, the situation is easily, you know, apparent that they're different, right? But in our case, my emulator was setting a very weird number. So, well, not very weird. Let me go there. It was a number that was so similar to my other address. You see the 10.0.2.15? It looks very similar to 10.0.0.2. So that's that makes it a network. Yeah. Right, so it, it tells you like, oh, they're similar. So I could actually, no, they're not similar. Access. They're They're very far away from each other. Yeah. It looks like something similar, but they are not. So the, not the, the same. Yeah, is right. not the same. And for that reason, you were never going to talk to that number here. That's what happens. So 
your job is to kind of like figure out what is the gateway number. So in my case, internally, it would be this number. The reason for it is that this gateway is gonna talk to my computer. That's what I want to access. I just want to access my gateway, okay? That's the only way for me, for, for this little guy here to talk to anything outside of it is through that number. I have to figure out that guy. And that's the reason why when I just went ahead and opened up this app that says like, um, what was it? Network information. Uh, this network information app, let me clear everything so you can get it, take a look at it. So this thing tells me right away what my gateway is. So mm -hmm. it tells me my gateway is that. That number was the most important one because that number is the one that refers to my real computer because that's my emulator sees that number and says that's the real computer. As soon as we used that number, everything started working. You saw that as right. soon as I used that number, right. I didn't have to do much. I just no. changed yeah, my settings. Yeah. Right. right, I just had to change my settings yeah. to just yeah. talk to that one because that's the one that refers to my computer. I don't know if that is actually clear enough, but basically that's what was going on. And my emulator cannot access anything on the outside if it is not through that number. Yeah. And then just to follow up, because earlier, which we don't have in this video, but we had, uh, we had installed the Fiddler certificate. However, you know, we went back into once we could access the internet and i shouldn't really say that because it was it was access fiddler is really what we did right right, right. On the phone we then downloaded the certificate again now could you have used the one we had already downloaded or did we have now, that's the funny that's the funny thing so um it might be that the certificate for this one here uh -huh. or, uh, for this one is it is different than the other Mm -hmm. That might be the thing. And actually, what I could do is to simply go ahead and um, the gates, oh, sorry, the connection here. Um, yeah. Sorry, the HTTPS, it gives me the option to export the root certificate. Um, where did you put it? This is the one, right? So this is one. This is for Hitler near. And if I go and open the old one, um, Hitler 4, here it is, I could actually export the certificate and take a look at it and see. Uh, if they're different in some, in some way, right? So I could do that. I could just go ahead and actions, export the root certificate, I got it. So I have these two guys, I could just go ahead and open them. This one. So there we go. Um, I will just minimize this and just keep this close on. So these are, oh my God, this background is annoying. Way too many letters. Okay, so, um, we have here, um, do not trust for both of them. Mm -hmm. Now the details of it, as you can see right away, the serial number changes. So they are different. Oh. So if you are going to work with uh, Fiddler Everywhere, which is the yeah. new one, you have to install its certificate. If you're gonna use with the, the older one, then you have to use its certificate because there are differences between them, okay? And that's the reason why we, even though we had installed something um, on the, uh, before we did this, um, right now it was telling like the certificate is not valid. Well, because <laughs> it was actually using the other one, the one that we, we, so basically I think that clarifies what was going on. You, you probably didn't have this issue because when you modified the nest, the network, you already put the host name correctly. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is the funny thing. So here, down here, you see the number that is down here. Right. Right? It's so nothing like the other it, one. It, it has nothing to do. It, 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 hold well, on. Right above it, hold up on. to now, levels. Yeah. Right. So you have the 10.0.0.2. That's my computer. So right. that's my computer's address. This is a virtual address that Fiddler has. Now, it might be that by coincidence, the time the, the when you did it, the emulator that you were using was using the same network space 
that Pickler was using, because this is a very common, this 192, 168.1.1, that's a very common um, network space. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of like the default. I don't know if you saw that I was actually typing that without actually watching it, because that is a very common, like 192.168.1.1 is a very, very common uh, network space. Now, it might be a very interesting coincidence that Fiddler, in this particular case, was using um, that space and the emulator that we used was using also that space. But in my case, my network for this emulator is not the same as the one of Spitler. And that's the reason why I was not able to actually kind of like reach it. That's what happens. Um, I think yeah, that's it. Even though since I had originally documented this like two years ago, I've moved right. and my IP address has changed. However, mm -hmm. again, Fiddler and the emulator, that was the commonality, right? That they were both- Right, so basically same. it might be that Fiddler and-, and, and that, that, so. The, the correct way of doing this is you get any network information um, app, whatever information you want, so whatever, and grab your gateway. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if Android automatically shows you your gateway, which is interesting. Maybe this Android version, let me go ahead and see it on my phone because I think on my phone I can see the gateway. But, um, so on my gateway, um, hold on. So I go to my phone, I go to network internet, and I could just simply say, um, let me see this. I do have the Wi-Fi preferences. So this is not what I'm looking for. And probably um, details. Yeah, so on my phone, I can see when I go to the network details, I can see my gateway right away on mm -hmm. my phone. Yeah. But it seems to be that this Android version, right, is a little bit older, or the guys on the emulator. Obviously, obviously. Actually, exactly. Because here, where I go to configure Wi Fi, it says my, it gives me my, my IP address right yeah. there below. It should tell me what my. Get, uh, gateway is. Yeah, and that was the missing piece that's all right. There. So that's the missing piece. So long as you are actually accessing, accessing the gateway, you the gateway in this case uh, is the same as your computer. That's what it means. So the emulator connects to your computer. The gateway is your computer. Right. And Fiddler, uh, right. And, Fiddler, and, Fiddler, and Fiddler is in your computer. So that's what you want to access. That's the reason why everything kind of like clicked right away. As soon as you go ahead and put the name kind of for your computer, everything works because that's where Fiddler is. Fiddler is in my computer on port 8866. That's perfect. And in this yeah. case, your and computer is the gateway. Why doesn't localhost work there? Oh, no, because localhost will refer to my emulator then. So oh. here, here in my computer, if I say localhost, yeah. Yes, I am talking about my computer, but if I do the same on the emulator, I get local it. host actually means the emulator. Though. So uh -huh. that's what happens. But basically, that's uh, so long as you configure it that way. Now we could just go ahead and um, uh, test other apps. And in this case, this is what we were trying to do with the reverse, right? So we were trying to get this reverse look of thing uh, to see how it looks, right? But that was it. Cool. Awesome, man. Well, that was easy. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I do know the concept, but when you go to the real life, right? When you yep. go to the real life and see the problem, you might not think about the concept that easily. That's right. where experience right. comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Experience, yeah. somebody like, I understand what is going on after if, I figure it out. <laughs> well, if and if we had started this without doing any of this part, and I had said, go to your paint and draw me what we're doing, we probably would have solved it right, right, right. away. Because so you knew hard, what yeah. pieces had to be there. But it's easy to forget that when we're inside it, right? And and right. miss like oh. and I was like, oh my God, it is just the it is just the gateway what I'm looking for. And, and and I'm not seeing the gateway here. So let me get an app that tells me the gateway. That was it. It was very simple. Lens back in, which we've talked about before. When you go to start something, 
you know, don't do coding. Don't, you know, write down don't the start what you got to do. That probably would have, you know. Saved a lot of time. Explained it, yeah. Right. <laughs> That's awesome. Awesome. All right. Cheers. Okay. Okay, so um, we're, we're going to walk through real quickly here on how to configure um, Fiddler to watch your emulator traffic, or also it happens to work on your phone traffic if you want to actually have your active phone, by the way, too. But here we're using an emulator. So go ahead. Jose. Excellent. So basically what I wanted, uh, basically the one who is going to guide me is you in this particular case, because um, what I'm actually asking is because this emulator is connected to your web, to your um, uh, network. Wi Fi or network, right? right? right. Via uh, a, um, uh, it's not like a real connection, it's a virtual connection, right? So this is connected via virtual connection, right? Now, in this case, I know that Fiddler is actually connecting to your live traffic. Now, how do you tell Fiddler? that the traffic that you're gonna about to see is actually not from your live thing, but from the virtual machine. You see what well, I mean? This is, this is where I, I love, I, I'm so glad we're talking because like you said, even though I've done this a couple of times and I might have to actually go back to the video to watch every okay. step exactly, because it's so complicated. But um, I would love to have your knowledge of better explaining what it what, is what what is going doing. on right yeah. so yeah because because i'm like i figured it out but i'm like i <laughs> I, I don't know the right terms so right. so getting back to it so fiddler is monitoring you know it's good at monitoring you know, like your computer in often most of the stuff right like a web browser um in so now but not everything right and even like auto hotkey you have to put in a certain header in order for it to track auto hotkey when it does requests okay, yeah right yeah exactly so so the problem is with an emulator, it's not Fiddler isn't seeing that. Now, if we used your Wireshark tool that you use a lot, it, it probably it would see very it. Very likely, very yeah. likely would see it. Now, um, here's But the it's thing. also, that tool is much more complicated, right, than Fiddler uh, is. I would say uh, to a degree, yeah, but it's here's the deal. Yeah. So you can see the IP address. This is the internal IP address, it's okay. Doesn't have anything on it. Right. But you can see you can see where that, that this particular um, IP is actually going into a different section than my uh, real IP. And this is exactly what is going on and why it's so difficult for you to just go ahead and um, uh, see it right away. Because if you go to your internet settings, your, um, let me see. So view your network properties very likely. Now you would notice here that the IP address is in a different section. Uh -huh. This one is not on the two. This one is zero. So 10.0.0.2, but the one on the on the emulator is actually in, in 10.0.2.15. That's yeah. the reason why which, they are in a different section of the network well, and they yeah, hold see on. each other. Yeah, which is is all fine and good, right? And I'm not right. knocking it at all. What I want to bring up, and this is where you can correct me, is um, uh -huh. even then, even though everything you said was, I'm sure, spot on correct, the real problem is that you need to first direct the emulator to go through Fiddler. And so no, that's no, what we... And that's, and that's what I was... Uh, yeah, so you are getting to the point that I was getting at. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. The emulator so, is in one section of the network. Your computer is in another section of the network. And there is a virtual connection between the two, which acts okay. as a bridge. That I didn't, that right. I understand. So that's the, that's that's the point. That so, okay. Right. So now there is a bridge between your emulator right. here and your computer. And Fiddler has to connect to that bridge. If Fiddler can connect to that bridge, then you will be able to see the traffic. That's what is going on. And maybe when you say that it was very difficult for you to actually figure out how to do that, maybe it's because you don't know what you were looking for. Maybe that's the point. We should actually take a look at. No, well, I'm just saying when when you okay. don't know any of this stuff and you try Googling it, it it's it's <laughs> crazy. it looks very crazy. <laughs> yeah, no direction. I didn't even understand the problem in the first place, and after I finally narrowed it down, I, I at least had an idea of what was going on. But um, but uh, right. <laughs> no, but, what, but here's the deal. Now here's the thing. Um, and this is where I get a little bit confused because 
basically we do have our network adapter. This is my real one. This is the one that connects to the internet. Now this is a virtual box thing. This is an adapter that was created by the virtual box program to actually connect a virtual machine to the internet. That's what it does. So if you are, and that's exactly, I think that's what I suspect that the emulator is doing, is creating um, an ethernet adapter in a way that connects to my real one. Right, but what's, again, my point is it that's all fine and good, but right. it still doesn't really matter. What we need to do is, is to have your emulator look for the Fiddler IP address. Okay. So I could use this, I could actually set up a VPN here. Like for example, I could, let me go ahead and verify this. With the virtual private network, I could actually put here the, the IP address from Fiddler and all my traffic will go okay. first to Fiddler. That's not the way I did it, but, but okay. let's, let's try it. I think we yeah. could try that, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if that's gonna work out because again, right. You need to set on before you try. Finish. Yeah. Um, let me let me actually yeah. set up a pin or password. Hold on. <laughs> right. Uh, tell me that I have to do this. I don't know. So can I do that? Yeah. Yeah. Then show. Uh, it's okay. Doesn't matter. Um, so Fiddler is that something that I could do? And this is the thing. I have never tried this, and I'm not sure how that would work. But. Um, uh, well, that's the question. Now I would have to authenticate, right? So the most common one would be the L2P, the L2, L2TP. Uh, let's go with an RSA, it's okay, or uh, let's go passcode. The server address would be the IP address. Um, and that's the thing. In your case, how did you figure out what well, would be the IP address for it? I don't use this version of Fiddler, right? I no. use the, the older one. However, on... I think it would be the same one. It would be the, the no, same. well, mine, on my version of Fiddler, in the top right, you can see, when you mouse over something, you can see okay, let's, the IP address. I do have it anyways. Right, let me try it. Fiddler. So that's Fiddler 4, I, I assume. Yeah. Let's go ahead and close this. Yeah, because actually, the, and I, I put the link in... Uh, in Telegram for you, but there's a uh, something we have to download also. So see on the on see when you the online in the top right mouse over that thing up to the right. There you go. Now the see one nine eight what I mean right so, one six eight dot five six dot one. Yeah, so the that's you, I mean. can't, you can't copy the darn thing. It's so ridiculous. Like no, but this is the funny thing. So that actually created um, a proxy connection between now. Let me see, because that's the fun, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So let me just one second. That actually created a, a specific kind of network. So, uh, hold on. so it is not here, but where do you create that network properties? I do have the virtual box here. We have the local air network. They are disconnected here. Oh, that is interesting. So he is creating kind of like a virtual thing. Okay, so what you want is the 192.168.56.1. Is that the one that you want? Correct. Yes, right. that's so what you want to put. Right, so that connection. hold on and that means the reason why they put it in a different so i get it the 10.2 uh, now this will never reach that address even if i try it this way it's not going to reach that address because that's in a different section of the network that is never going to reach okay. there so, so let's, let's... i think it was let me see hold on um let me see what it is. 56, 168, 56.1. Yeah. So 56.1. Um, there is no username and password. I, and I actually, and that's the thing. So if I try to ping this computer, it is never going to reach. I know that for sure. So let me try that. Um, username, password. 
missing one. No, that's not it. What are you missing? Oh. The pre-shared key, maybe? Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, no, so this is not going to work because this this is when I have an authentication for it. That's not what we're doing. We probably are going to use kind of like a proxy. So a VPN is not going to work for me there. So um, network settings. Maybe did you change the network settings well, manually? Can, yeah, yeah. I, what what I did was I long clicked on that. Mm -hmm. Can you long click it? Does it and modify network? Right. right. Advanced. Proxy. Now that is where. Um, yeah. You, so in the, the proxy, proxy, I would have to manual. Manual, set and that's where you put in so the IP address the port. And, yep. and then the it was, it's usually 8888. Okay. But we can change it though, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah, but in this it's case, right. I think it is the 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 um, original one. I think I haven't changed anything here. So maybe in the options. Yeah, HTTPS. Uh, Oh, no, that's for the that's this oh, is one, okay. connections. So, so, so that's that's what I'm going to look for in the other in the new version. So in the new version, probably if I go to the connections well, options or something, I would be able to see that. But yeah. I and we can see the current this. right. I don't see. However, there's another step that I did, uh -huh. and I think I can do it from memory. But it's uh, it's it's not easy. Okay. Um, is uh, I put the link in Telegram. There's a, a, a link, well, actually, it's a link to the page, but we need to, once you go to that page, scroll down to Cert Maker, C E R T M. Oh, the certificate maker. Oh, wow. Yeah. I so down, download, oh, okay. download that. And now I don't know how that's going to work with the version, the new version of Fiddler, right? But with the old version, you can, after you install it and it works in there and you can create your cert from there. Oh, but there was one more step. Okay, well, let me reload this off. Fiddler four. Now the the the. I would assume that you have to actually config configure that. Um, configure that. Um, you gotta. You need to restart Fiddler if you didn't I do did. that. I did. I did. Okay. So probably. Uh, not the extension. No, it's, it's under uh, HTTPS. Okay. E right. So it would be on the HTTPS. You yeah. Said? Then see the actions over on the right. Yeah. I think that is where um, export. I think that's. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a certificate that I could actually use on the Android machine. Is that right. What you're now, doing? now hold on. Now I'm going to put it's just easier instead of trying to read it to you on your emulator. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's weird. Oh, it cut my bullets. Um, sorry, but just do the, go to that, navigate, just go ahead and hit save here. We're, we're good there. Mm -hmm. And then open your browser on your emulator. I wouldn't know if I had a browser installed. I should. Uh -huh. And then go to the, that I just gave you, HTTP colon slash IPv4 dot fiddler. Hold on, you, you sent it over... Um, Telegram, yeah. Right, Just lose so, the bullet. <laughs> right, so... IPv4. Um, no dot com, no anything, right? So just the... Uh, right, just like it is there. Yeah. Right, so... What is that all about? So right now I'm connected to a, to the proxy, so everything is going to go through. Did you have the HTTP colon slash slash in front? Yeah, I did. Oh, hold on, no. Like this? Yeah. But that's not going to work out anyways, because I, I, I am passing the information through the proxy still. So maybe if I, hold on, modify the network. Let's go ahead and set none for now. Maybe if I go. No, I'm pretty sure I had mine on when I did that. Um, okay, so the name is not resolved, and I need to um, the certificate that I downloaded. What should I do with it? Well, that um, you need to download it. To, that's what this will download it to your phone. This. So the eight. This yes. So I think you have to have that fiddler turned back on. Okay, that is interesting. How would it know where? This is where I got, I 
like I said, it was voodoo magic. <laughs> I was just like, all right, I, I don't even understand. Uh, 56.1? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That is interesting. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so for me, it, does, it doesn't... Um, and this is this is for me is expected. The reason for that is that this computer, so this this emulator, is in a, in a network, right? So this computer is in a network, and I'm trying to access a, a specific part of a network that I'm not connected to, and that makes it um, in a way that I. I shouldn't be able to access that unless I am in the same type of network, um, unless I do something like this. And so that would be, I don't know, I'll make it number two here. This would make me on the same network. Uh, still, I don't think this might work, but that would make more sense to me, even though because this address, this address should be on the same section of the other address. If they're not in the same section, they could not interact with each other. That's what is going on. Now, there are some things that I cannot configure here, like the, this gateway. I don't have that gateway. Actually, Fiddler is not connected to that gateway. That's the reason why I cannot actually connect one to the other. This one is connected to a 10.0.0.2. So Fiddler is already doing kind of like a translation in there that I'm not doing on my emulator. So there are some things that, of course, even if I put the numbers here, there's a translation that I'm not doing. That's what is going on. So I, let me go ahead and let's do the following. Let's go ahead and follow the steps that you followed can you give me the uh, um, the video that you were actually following? Yeah. Um, so that I could actually just take a look at that. Yeah, I mean, but this is, I mean, this is pretty much the steps I know because I uh, have a Knox computer, right? The IP address, first of all, is not the same as your local network, right? It is different. This is a, this is a very weird address that they create, right? Yeah. And second but, of all, this yep. doesn't change, but you're setting the traffic through the proxy, right? So right. this stays the same. This actually goes through the proxy. Right. Now, after you set up the proxy, which is what we were doing, this is the part that makes um, not... So let me see, hold on. Right. Right. Trust it. Trusted credentials. Yeah. Right. So basically, yeah, I thought so. So basically, um, the I have to install the certificate first. So I do have. But you have to get it, and that was how I, I swear. No, so yeah, what I would do basically is just kind of like get it from here, maybe okay. um, cut it, paste it here. Right. I'm not sure why you need the certificate maker because Fiddler allows you to export the certificate, what I would say, like, so certificate. Mark, where, where's the certificate? Oh, I have to probably refresh this up. So, nope, I needed this, I see. Do I have it now? Certificate, oh, there it is. Fiddler root certificate. Now, if I go to the settings, Nothing security. Now we are going. So hold on. Yeah. What? This is the one. 
Yeah. VPN and apps. Okay. Fiddler is installed and then says trusted credentials, right? So now the trusted credentials. Um, there it is. The fit really is. Well, hey, real quick, why does it say do not trust? Like, I mean, I know they just wrote that, but why would someone, it makes no sense to me. Why would you purposely write do not trust uh, in your name of, you know what I mean? That just yes. seems weird. Right. Um, the thing is that you are making, you. so it is in the sense that if you have never installed that credential and you find it, do not trust it, remove it because you didn't actually install it yourself. Now, in my case, if I installed it, I know what I did because this is the funny thing. It, it, this credential could be installed without your knowledge. It's maybe what you're saying, right? Yeah, that's just so, weird. All right. All right. Right. Um, now, in this case, I do have the credentials now. Let me go ahead and set up the um address again right so this time i would expect it so i have my proxy set up here Still there. Yep. now hold on now this is the issue so let me let me open let me open the order so the older one because i think i wanted to do it with the new one but that's the question how do i know my current Thing. I know that it has its own port, but I don't see what the address is for it. What's the gateway? Right. So I, I, I thought that I would find it in the gateway, but I don't. Okay. Right. So um, I could set up one myself. Is there, or, are there some buttons in the top right there? I, is that my screen? Oh, that was my screen. Never mind. <laughs> it was just right. dirty. Uh, right. So th that, that's different. Now, yeah. that's the thing. So I know, but... I know that I could, I will figure it out later on. On the bottom right. Oh, no, 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 go back to it. The bottom right says connected. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, and this time you can actually copy it. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> God, that was annoying. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so basically one is the same address. The only difference would be that the port, um, the port is 866. Uh, 8866. Six. So let's go ahead and open up this guy, modify network. And if I go to the 8866, I would say save. Um, now that I have that, if I go to my um, web browser, browser or anything, right? We should see that. Hopefully, you can load it. No, I can't. So that's still there. You know that certificate's thing. installed. Right. So the certificate is installed. And I think that's the funny thing. So let me go ahead and take a look at. Why is that thing actually firing up? That is interesting. Why is that firing up? Okay, whatever. Apparently, you need a budget. <laughs> no, that that that's what I that that's this thing I use this uh -huh. uh, for for creating my budgets, but I'm not using it right now, so I'm not sure why it is firing. Uh, okay, so this is okay. So let me see. Mm -hmm. Crown there. Mm -hmm. So you just bypassed this part, right? Right. So it gives you this little this address, which is the Fiddler Echo service, right? Now, can I access this in here? I do for Fiddler. Um, that should not be, oh yeah, here it is. And this is because it is open here now, what it says, 200 report this point. Yep, and there's the certificate. Right. Um, download, but, but we already, is that, the, that's the same right. as exporting it from Fiddler? I'm sorry? The, you know how we went in to Fiddler and exported this, you can download the Yeah, Fiddler. I think, I think it would be the same. Look at that, Fiddler. Root sir is the same, I think. I would think I would agree. I just right I now. Now the thing is, the funny thing is that I don't have to use this address. I can just simply say one thing, something two things, two thing one. It's the same page. So you're just doing a local host there. Uh huh. The thing that I know that um, 
It's the same. So you can just use local host. It's the same. Now the question is, uh, now you know what? this is a service in the local host. Okay, this is a service on my main computer. My, you see this guy? It will How did I access it then? That's the question. That's the, <laughs> if we answer that part. Yeah. If we answer that part, you are good to go. So how does your computer access the main computer? Because this local host here is my main computer, but these two places, the command prompt, if I just ping 10.0.0.1, this is my local host. So, well, not my local host in this case. So I could ping myself local host. I can ping myself. Okay, so that's okay, fine. But I cannot ping a, a system in a different section of the network. I cannot do that. I need a translation. That's what is going on. So that's where um, the address, the, the network translations comes into place. And I think that's exactly what is going on. So let me go ahead and see something. If I go ahead and remove the proxy configuration, let me see something. So that's the part that I'm actually kind of like thinking about. How do you, now if I manually set this up, let me go ahead and remove this Instagram. 10 points to 0.5 or 10. We've got 10 points to 0.5, right. One, right. Let's see, what, let's see what happens here. So now, yeah, I cannot access it anyways. Oh, cool. I'm trying to turn it on. I can't. Because this is actually in a, right, this is different because this is in an address that is kind of like. Protected. Didn't that say two instead of 20 or does it? No, I said 20 here. Now I'm, I'm trying yeah, but... to reach. Oh, right. Huh, that is interesting. Yeah. Now hold on, when I say one point. Oh no, from, so from myself, I think I am point two right now. So if I- uh, Oh, I got you. Right, so I I think that's, right. that's just me, so- And you're pinging, yeah. Right, I'm trying to ping somebody and I got myself a reply yeah. saying like, yeah, I yeah. cannot actually go. Nice. So that is the thing. Now, look at this. You see this virtual box here. You see this virtual box for yeah. just on the network? That's the one that has the IP address from Fiddler. Right. You see what I mean? So Fiddler creates this network. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So this is the one. Now, my virtual machine here will have to connect to this network not to the one that I'm connected right now. And that's where the problem is. That's what we're putting in. But that's, let me see if I understand. But that's what I, you know, that, that was no, what I, I would ask, So that's the question. How did you connect that? I, I just long clicked there. Right, so. so Modify even, network and. So let me, let me first of all, have right. my DHCP here. That's gonna be assigned automatically on my manual thing. It's going to be 192.168.56.1. Yeah. And let's use the 8888. Right. Now, here's my. It is still have it has its own IP address, but it's going to proxy through the other address. And that's the thing. This network cannot connect. To that now you know what the way how i do it there it is this is where i would actually configure this uh dns setting so what i would think you would do that is in the actual settings of the emulator that's what i'm thinking about maybe over here that's where i could actually just go ahead and but this is a oh, bridge network um 
Nah, I don't want that. And this, the DNS settings, maybe I should change it to maybe to 168.56.1. Maybe that settings change. So now, maybe, right, so let's go and try this out. What would happen if I, yeah, let me remove the proxy in here. Uh, mm -hmm. That IP address. I'm sorry? The, I thought I'm we sorry. did that. Right, I, I, I did that. I'm sure we did. Hold on, let me make sure of this first. Let me see what happens when I go to YouTube. Or YouTube. No, at least it's so, searching. So, so, so it is searching now, right? So in this case, I'm searching. What am but I we're using? not connected through Fiddler. So, so, no, no, that's the question. So let me go ahead and verify. No, I'm still connecting through the normal network. And that's the question. How do I disconnect from this network? Why don't you, could you add a network and do it on a separate yeah, thing? Yeah, but that's the thing. That network should actually exist. And, and that network would be. That DHCP, that's the dynamic IP kind of thing. Is that right? It'll update itself. Uh, you're talking the DHCP, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't do a lot with network stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's why it was all voodoo to me of like, ah, uh, I'm just. Right. Guessing. This one is complicated, right? So, uh, didn't I just create it? Yeah. I did do that. What happened then? So the DHCP static, I said 192.168. I put a number. And I, my was that 56? Is, right, yeah. so the gateway is going to be 56. I want to connect to that one. Oh, but I don't see it. So, so it, it doesn't show up because it doesn't exist. That's oh. Right, right. So, uh, so it is not as simple as it. And, and the reason why it's not that simple is because we don't know what we're doing, right? So that, that's the reason why. Um, but I did it in Knox, you know, repeatedly. Right. But for some reason... This looks like the normal thing to do, just set up a proxy. But for me, the reason why it doesn't make sense is because how does my um, emulator uh, know where that, uh, where that thing is? That's what I'm trying to kind of like specify here. I'm not specifying that. That's for DNS settings. I cannot specify where am I going to connect. That's what happened. 